Billy Harris. You're hanging with Harris. We're in New York City at my favorite place, Barbudo. Gonna visit my good friend Jonathan Waxman. He's gonna make me the JW chicken. I'm very excited. Let's go check it out. Billy, how are you? I am so good, because I'm hanging with you. It's no, I'm hanging with Harris today. You are hanging with Harris today. But we're also hanging with Waxman. We are hanging with Waxman. I've been waiting years, and we've made it. How so, does it all begin? I was a musician for a long time. I played trombone. And that's what I thought I'd be the rest of my life. And then the 70s hit and disco and all of a sudden trombones were about as useless as, you know, uh, you know, you know the story. And I went to work for this restaurant called the Rusty Harpoon in Kanapali Beach. And I had a great time. When I came back to Berkeley, my father goes, you got to get a real job. Enough of this, enough of this nonsense, restaurants, rock and roll and stuff. Yeah. So I, I went to work for Steve Griswold, who had the greatest Ferrari dealership in America. And I sold Ferraris. So one day his wife, who was a big foodie, sure. was talking to me. He said, you talk about food all the time. You go to Shape and for lunch, et cetera. I said, yeah, I like food. She goes, would you ever think about going to cooking school? I said, no. She goes, I have a friend who's got a cooking school called Mary Risley Cooking School in San Francisco. So the head mechanic, Tide, and I went and took cooking classes. And he liked it, but I loved it. And I fell in love with Mary. I fell in love with cooking classes. And she, unbeknownst to me, signed me up for the La Varenne Cooking School in Paris. So I went to cooking school at La Varenne, and I came back, and then I went to work at Domaine Chandon. Right. Then I went to work at Alice Waters Chez Panisse. Then I became the chef at Michael's in Los Angeles. And you were in LA. And then I, opened, then I opened my own restaurant in New York in 1983. And then yeah. roll forward to 2001. I opened a restaurant called Washington Park. Right. And my neighbor there, and he said I had this uh, uh, the studio, would you want to open a restaurant in my little space In below. the former Rolls Royce garage. Exactly. And two years later, we opened up Barbuda, and I didn't think I'd do any business here at all. I had it myself and Lynn McNeely, my chef. He and I did everything. We had no computers. We did everything by hand. And the first week, all of a sudden, the doors got flooded. The culinary school, the music, to Barbudo, to all these restaurants in 30 years in New York. Do you really feel that you have a particular style? Finding the best ingredients. Sure. And not screwing it up. In other words, respecting what these are. That, that's right. really, that's what it is. Look at that, that bird is just- It's a beautiful bird. It's a gorgeous bird. And I'll show you what we do with these chickens, and it's so simple. All you do is you, you gently cut through. Now I take the wings out, we serve these for staff lunch. It's just, you know, I'm gonna show you right now. Yeah, it's we're so, doing it. It's so simple. You got a beautiful chicken. Beautiful chicken. And you just try not to screw it up. You take out the backbone, and that's only the only bone structure we're gonna we're gonna take care of in the chicken today. Sure. And at home, you could do this with a um, with a scissors. It's a lot easier. So here's the trick on the chicken because it's kind of important. Sure. So you take a towel and you you take your hands to top each other and you press down. You break the. Can you hear that? <laughs> yeah, I heard it. You just broke something. What broke did you just break? I broke the breastplate broke and the, the wishbone. Okay. And then what I'm doing is I'm gonna, you see how I'm putting the, my fist on top of the knife? Uh, yeah, as compared to under it. Okay, so you're cutting through. Yep. Isn't that perfect? It's perfect. It's gorgeous, right? So what do you do to it? You just what take do a, you do? You just take a tiny bit of olive oil, and, this and is really it. good olive oil, and you dribble on top. Beautiful sea salt. Amazing. Not, not crappy salt from, the, from your little shaker that's been sitting around for 12 years. No. Right? You got fresh pepper, and everybody goes, well, can I use the pepper from a little shaker? No, you use fresh pepper. Use fresh pepper. I'm doing it up high, so you want to get it evenly coated all over the whole chicken. Now, we're just going to take it in a pan. Hot pan? Are we already no. hot on the pan? At home, I suggest using a cast iron skillet. Okay. Now, I'm going to use this special oven over here. Now, the reason it's special is because it's, it's got all these, it looks fancy. Honestly, it cooks like a regular oven. How hot is the oven, though? Is that 450. Happen? So it's not like an 800 degree thing? No. Okay, so we're making salsa verde. Very green salsa. Yeah, but people get mistaken. There's there's green salsa from Mexico, which is tomatillo okay. and jalapeno based. Totally different. From totally this. different. Yeah, it's a, it's a totally different. Thing. So this is how you do garlic, right? Okay. Scared me a little, actually. The other way to do it is like this. Perfect. So, you could do this in a Cuisinart at home if you want to. Okay. You, don't, you don't do all this nonsense. So then, some capers. These are actually flowers that didn't grow yet. And they cure them in salt. Put some salt on there for me. Good amount, right on top, a little more. And then some pepper, you're good with the pepper, I'm right? I'm good with the pepper. Moss, or just like Keep a going, bit? keep going. The man says keep going. Like oh, this is mean, a lot of pepper. Like you mean it. And then, then we're gonna put some anchovy on here. We're gonna put about four fillets. Okay. And these are cured, and they're not, see they're not greasy, so these are cured in salt. Okay. And so a little red pepper flake, not too much. 
And then here's how you hold the knife for this, Billy. So the knife is like a little boat, right? Yep. You're holding your thumb on the bottom, your fingers on top, and watch how these three fingers on here, and I'm using my elbow, okay. not my wrist. Everybody uses their wrist. Right. But you want to just right, do this, keep it and, straight. and you're just gently doing this. You said Cuisinart. You, you could to, do right? right in the Cuisinart, but I would actually add some more olive oil, so you wouldn't make a big mess. Right. So Perfect. now we're ready to baste the chicken. We tilt the pan away from ourselves. This is pretty easy. And so then there's all the oil, all the yummies draining down. It's all the olive oil and that beautiful schmaltz. Look at this. See that bubbles are coming out of there? It's happening right now. The skin, the oil, everything's getting in. It's and this, making the magic this happen. This is the magic. It and is that, the magic. And that's and look how nice and brown it's getting. Now if it gets too brown, we're gonna flip it over. I think we're okay right now. So this is going back in. Yep. Going right in. Okay? Yeah. And that's it. We're gonna finish the salsa verde. Finish the salsa verde. Okay, so and what's happening is the garlic the anchovy capers are absorbing the olive oil. Yeah, it's all oil. soaking it, it, it up, it's yummy, beautiful? it smells great. Now we're gonna take some herbs. Some herbs. I'm gonna put some oregano in here. That's the parsley. This is tarragon. Love it. Smell that. All right, here we go. Olive oil, Billy. And be liberal now. I'm being liberal. Don't be a Republican. I'm not being a Republican. I'm cutting <clears throat> as opposed to chopping. Yeah, you're not chopping. Or well. whacking the board. Right. All right, I think our salsa verde is pretty good. Salsa verde looks amazing, smells amazing. So let's put it in our little bowl Salsa here. verde bowl. Fresh salsa verde. And now, now we're gonna take that bird out. Now, Billy, you, you know the drill now. The drill is this way. Look what it does to the skin. And that's the magic. The bird is actually done. Bird's done. We're just gonna let it sit in the pan right here. This is really key, right? I mean, you need to let it, if it was chicken or anything you else. You let it show. Right? Got to chill. So let's go back, finish our potatoes. To the papas. Put a towel on top here and kind of crush it with both hands. Give it a good. Yeah, like you mean it. No, oh, I mean don't, it. Don't crush it too much. Beautiful, look at that. Do this one. You, you did a good job, Billy. I could work the line. Yeah. These, these potatoes actually have been steamed for about an hour. And they've been steamed in a little garlic and rosemary. Not okay? all the way. We got potatoes already. So these potatoes, they're already steamed, okay. they're crushed. Nice spuds. Yeah, they're gonna, we're gonna break them up just a little bit. We're gonna do something amazing with them. Yeah, we're gonna put them in the fryer. Now at home, okay. if you don't have a fryer, you, have a fryer in your you just put them in a sheet pan and sprinkle with olive oil, sea salt, a little salt, and roast in the oven. Roast them up. Yeah, you can put a little butter on if you want to. Okay, where are you going with that? Right, right in here. the fryer. Right in the fryer. And the oil here is about 325. Okay, yeah. All you're really doing is your, what we call caramelizing them. Right. Or getting them brown. Now, almost brown, not dark brown. Okay. That's kind of the trick here. You don't want to overcook them. Now, Billy, I want you to put a little bit of salt on here, not a little, just a little bit. Up high, up high, remember? I'm gonna put some pecorino cheese. You can use Parmesan too. Yep. Little cheese like that. Amazing. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. How's that smell? So good. We're gonna put the potatoes on this little plate here. Perfect. Just like we do at Barbudo. Mm. So here's how we cut it up, Billy. I'm watching. So. This is a little delicate here, so taking the knife and you don't want to damage the skin. Look at all that love coming out of the chicken right now. So you cut it. Straight through. Separating the breast from the leg. Now see how hot it is in there? Touch yeah. that. Yeah, it's real hot. Then we're gonna cut it right through the thigh and leg. Perfect. Put that right here. Yep. Thigh is gonna go on here. Thigh, leg, breast. Now we can leave the breast whole or we can cut it. So let's. Let's make it easy for our guests to Let's eat it. Let's make it easy for the guests. Again, the same technique. Perfect. Yep. Cut that. Look how beautiful that's cooked. It's perfect. The other piece of the breast. Billy, you have your salsa verde. You want to just kind of spoon it on top. The waxman technique. Not too much, not too little. A little on the, on the leg there, buddy. Just a drop. I like the leg. And then we're done. Chicken. Potatoes. Table 21, please. Table 21. It's perfect. That's I'm Billy it. Harris. You've been hanging with Harris. My hey, good friend Jonathan Waxman. Hanging with Waxman. Hanging with Harris. Waxman. Waxy at Barbudo, New York City. We'll see you real soon.